Hey all Nate Morris the Shoots Canyon Fly Shop. Uh, today we're going to tie an intruder style fly. Uh, we're going to make this one blue and black with an emphasis on blue. Uh, you can tie this in a lot of different colors. Uh, kind of one of those match the conditions kind of deals. Um, I like blue and black when the water is a little bit off color or any situation where you have low light. Um, it's great on a cloudy day, great early morning, late evening kind of stuff. Um, mostly winter steelhead, but uh, can certainly work uh, summer steelhead places like the Deschutes, that kind of thing if you like fish in a sink tip. Um, or, you know, when the White River blows out, that kind of thing on the lower river. Uh, using a partridge double Waddington shank 25 millimeters uh, and then we're fishing a owner size 4 as the trailer here um, and then this here is 40 pound wire for tuna fishing which I found to be great for tying on trailing hooks um, one of those deals that you really can't lash this down too much um, rather have more thread rather than not enough thread. It is the one thing that's connected to a steelhead when you do hook up, so really don't want to undergun it. Um, problem with this wire, sometimes it can be a pain to cut. Okay, some dice can create some uh, create some issues with uh, the being abrasive on our thread. Usually isn't this tough to cut. Scissors must be getting even more dull than normal. Well, that might create some problems with our thread, we'll see. And we're gonna go right over where we put that wire a bunch here so we don't have a weak spot there. And also you wanna go over where um, where that double Waddington comes back on itself there quite a bit. All right, we've got a good bond there. All right, we're gonna start off by putting a little dubbing bump here. Uh, and this just is gonna help kind of give our intruder style fly that kind of umbrella look that is signature to it. Um, I'm using ice dub in blue steely color. Uh, you know, you could certainly use all sorts of colors. A lot of times I like to do a darker fly and then maybe do a chartreuse dub or a little kind of hot red color dub back here and just kind of gives it a little bright spot on the fly. Uh, that's a great way of doing it. Um, a little hot red or hot pink on this blue and black works great. another fiber here to kind of splay things out and you can do a lot of things here you could do some schlapping uh, you could do guinea what we're going to do here is a little piece of arctic fox and we're going to spin it in a dubbing loop when you're spinning arctic fox in a dubbing loop um, you want you want to get rid of this kind of fat section that happens here uh, below the hook so i'm just going to wrap my thread around that and make it a nice tight area there when we when we go to spin it cut off a not a huge chunk but a decent little chunk of arctic fox here i don't want to use too much but kind of got to play with this to kind of know exactly how much you want here cut it right on the base there and we're just going to pick out some of these fibers back here um, the under fur stuff we don't really need that We want to spread this out nice and even and we want just maybe half a centimeter quarter of an inch um, sticking out of the the butt material there slow spin to start here we just want to kind of get it going and then we're going to go ahead and give that a little little flick i like to pick out this as we go and just kind of splay it out
And all I'm using here is a dubbing brush as a little piece of Velcro attached to my bodkin. Works great. All right, we're just gonna fold this as we go. And this, almost as much as anything, is kind of given size and, and um, that perception of size, I should say, to your intruder. Um, we want it to kind of be fat and splayed out. Don't want to use too much material there, but just enough. And again, we're just going to pick this out here. Like I said before, you can use Schlappen, Guinea, a lot of different things right there to kind of give it this fat profile. Original intruders used uh, spun deer hair. I've really kind of gone to where I use Arctic Fox a lot and I like it. Uh, polar Bear is another great option there if you have lots of it on hand. I don't like to use my Polar Bear for uh, intruder style flies personally, but that's me. Alright, now we're going to add another fiber here. You could use ray, you could use ostrich, you could use um, uh, Lady Amherst, um, other types of pheasant materials. We're going to use ostrich. Um, if you really want a nice fat fly, something you can do here is cut your materials back here and use the stiffer stems of your fly, um, and that will help keep things splayed out a little bit. I don't care as much about that. Um, I'm just going to, I'm really tying this fly as maybe a little bit smaller variation anyway, so uh, we're just going to tie this in the round, so kind of splay those fibers out, want them nice and even, and before you really tighten things down, you can kind of pull them around, if you've got, a, got some, some gaps you want to fill. Put those in close. Alrighty here. And we're going to add for a body. We're going to use uh, diamond braid and blue. You can you can put an, a hackle over this, or you can just go with just straight body. I tend to like a little thinner body here. Uh, kind of helps that fly get down a little better too. Um, Sometimes when you tie intruders, you just got so much material on there the poor fly can't get down anywhere. All right, I'm just going to wrap this forward. You could use black here. Um, black would go well with this blue fly. Um, and then, of course, if you're tying different colors, you can use whatever you want. The great thing about steelhead is they really don't care nearly as much as we think they do. Alright, I'm going to put another bump here, this time with black dubbing. When I tie in this bump, I want to tie it uh, right on top of my diamond braid, and that's just going to, just using physics to help us, you're tying on top of a thicker section anyways. And this is polar dub, and the only reason I'm using polar rather than ice is I'm just using what I got on hand. Uh, you can also use chenille here. Um, I almost never use chenille on any flies because I just don't like the way it looks usually, but every once in a while I do. And again, this is just our nice little bump. All right, now we're going to tie in a piece of schlappen behind that. And Again, this is all about kind of creating a teardrop umbrella shape here. Strip away our loose fibers here, and I'm going to use the, the nice webby fat stuff at the base of this schlap and feather here. Um, pull it back here. And as I've said before, I like to I like to adjust these fibers as I go here. I don't fold them ahead of time. So if 
fold and go fold and go Yeah, probably four wraps is appropriate here. You know, that web is, we're using that, that webbiness of schlapping to kind of um, push water. Alright. We're going to grab some Lady Amherst here. Lady Amherst is one of my favorite fibers for tying steelhead flies where you can use some fairly long Amherst. This is off the center tail feather. Uh, you can put this in a dubbing loop. I don't like to do it. You just tend to lose control of the fibers. Um, you know, and I don't think you really gain anything by that and sometimes it creates a little fatter look anyway so we're just going to kind of wrap this loosely around and a nice soft loop there and tighten her up that should be about perfect and uh, something you can do here too is if you miss a spot we've got a little bit of a gap right here and that's fine I'm just going to clip off three more fibers and add them right in there because yeah, we're going to get a big head on a fly like this anyway, so uh, taking a couple more wraps to get fibers exactly where you want them isn't that big of a deal. Alright, perfect. And trim all of our loose ends here. You know, I, like I said before, you can you can throw this in a dubbing loop, and you got a little less cleanup work. Um, but you know, no matter how good you get at dubbing loops, um, it's going to take more time to to spin that than to to clip it. So that's what I like to do. All right, our fly is basically done here. You could add a guinea front here hackle if you would like. Um, I don't really see the need. It adds. It can help push a little bit more water, but it also keeps it from sinking a little bit. Uh, and then I'm going to add some sparkle eyes from Montana Fly Company here. And add these to the bottom so we always have our fly running exactly where we want it to. this down. We don't want this going anywhere. Now, did the fish care about the eyes? I don't know, but I think it makes a really sharp looking fly. Alrighty, and we're just going to whip finish. And I give five five wraps, and I'm actually going to do it twice with these intruder stop flies. I mean, reality is our head's big anyway, so what difference does it make? We might as well make sure we aren't going to have any loose ends out there. And then I like to use hard as nails or hard as hole. Um, nice thick layer of it, maybe two layers of it, just to clean everything up and make sure the fish's teeth doesn't get in there. Um, and create some problems because there are going to be some fish teeth on this fly. Guarantee it. It just kind of gives a nice little protective coat to it. Um, and there we go. There's a nice blue, mostly blue, and black intruder. And of course, you could do this with all sorts of variety of colors. Uh, I think orange and pink looks great. Red is a great color. Uh, pink by itself, black, black and chartreuse. Lots of variations, and that's kind of that's about half the fun of tying steelhead flies. You can just make it up as you go. 
Alrighty, thanks for watching.